Well, folks, you know, today is a special day because I love to share, uh, you call it a message, but it's more than a message, it's a, a feeling, you know. I like to join in, I like for us to participate. And the reason is that uh, every message is different. Whatever we do today is going to be a combination of you and I. Example. You know, I like to do call and response. You know, when you when you go to church and the minister says, can I have an amen? What does everybody say? Amen. amen. You think? That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, uh, affirmations. One of the beauties of affirmation is that when you say it with feeling and absolute, you get results. You know, when the good Lord said, let there be light, he didn't wonder. <laughs> And so, whatever we say about ourselves is always true. I feel great today. Let's say that together. I feel great today. And let's do I am love together. I am love. So, you see us working together this way, if it's a really great service, I can say I did it. <laughs> and if it's not, then we can say we did it. <laughs> I also like to put us, you know, Paula did a beautiful meditation, and when I get into the meditation, sometimes I don't want to come back. You ever felt that? It's like, man, I think I'm going to stay here. But I like to do just a, a brief meditation. I like to just sort of bring us all together in one point in time and space. So if we could just close our eyes for one moment and just take a deep breath and hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath and hold it. Let it down slowly. I am at peace with myself. Let us say that together. I, I am, am at peace with myself. myself. Now let us whisper it. And in this state of peace and calmness, my mind is open receptive and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Give yourself a The topic is harmonic relationships, and I'm a musician, and you know, in music, when everything is in harmony, it sounds good. You know, those musicians, when you tune up the instruments, everybody has to be tuned to certain pitches. And if that pitch is not just right, you can tell. So I'd like to open with a, a reading from our book, The Twelve Universal Laws of Success on Harmonic Relationships. The basic principle of the universe is that of order. When order is extended over a time period, it becomes harmony. This universal harmony is like a great symphony in which all notes, vibrations, and sounds are being played at the same time for all time. Each entity, each person, each life form is a note a vibration in that great universal sound. When your life is in order, your goals are attained and your visions are realized. Your purpose is fulfilled and you are in a complete harmonic relationship with the universe. And that is really what we strive for, to be in that great, that positive space, that harmonic space where where we feel good, where everything looks good, where we're happy. But then there's always, you know, one of the interesting things about the universe is it's, it is harmonic. There's a yin and a yang. You know the story George Burns used to say, uh, there was a movie called Oh God, and the little boy said to him, if you're a God, why do you create sickness and death and all these negative things? And he says, you know, good question. He said, I never could figure out how to create an up with 
without a down. How to create light without darkness. And so this whole idea of a harmonic relationship is how to move between the light and the dark, the good and the bad, so that our life is always in harmony with all that's good for us. How do you know your life is out of order? <laughs> when your instrument's not tuned up, <laughs> when the clarinets are flat, and when the trombone is sharp, and you can feel it. When, you, when your life is out of order, you're not happy. And we've all been there, haven't we? We're not clear about where we're going. We experience anxiety, stress, and a whole lot of other negative feelings when our life is out of order, when we're not in harmony with the symphony that is our lives. And so how do we get our life in order? <laughs> That's the key. The key, and we call this the seven harmonic relationships. The foundation of the universe is order, principle, and action. And when we are congruent with that order, those principles and those actions, life is good. We experience happiness, prosperity, fulfillment. We manifest our purpose. How do we put it all in order? The seven basic harmonic relationships, and our goal in life is to put them all together so that we're in harmony and so that that symphony that is our life is a beautiful one, and one that's pleasing. The first harmonic relationship is self with source. Self with God. God, the universal intelligence, the universal consciousness, the source of all that is. One of the beauties of the unity message is that God is within. As we say, we and God are one. You know, sometimes people think God is down the road, heaven is way over there, but it's right here within us. In the fourth chapter, in uh, St. John, the 10th chapter, in the 30th verse, it says, I and my Father are one. It doesn't get much clearer than that. You know, the beauty of the Bible is that it is a book of spiritual principle. You know, people read it on different levels. But when we can really see it as a book of spiritual principles to give us guidance, it's an awesome roadmap for happiness and success. And what is the nature of God? Well, once again, in 1 John 4, chapter the 8th verse, it says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Let us say that together. God is love. And so that first harmonic relationship is a, a proper relationship with God. And, and love is really about right relationships. You know, love is a word that's interesting. We only have one word for love, kind of. You know, we have to work on that. The Eskimos have about 25 words for snow. <laughs> because it's important to them. So we need to work on love a little bit because Love is about right relationship. There's a love for God. There's a love for your spouse. There's a love for your children. There's a love for dogs. There's a love for all. In other words, right relationship. When our lives get out of whack sometimes, it's because we have a wrong relationship with people, with things, with situations. As you were saying, it's not that the situation doesn't change. It's how we respond to it. We have the power to do that. When Jesus was in the temple, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, I keep naming this like the Republicans and the Democrats. <laughs> and one of them, in the 22nd chapter, the 37th verse, Matthew, and Matthew is a great, Matthew gives probably the most complete treatment of the Sermon on the Mount. And if you ever listen and read the Sermon on the Mount, if you don't read anything else, you'll, you'll be all right. Because the principles in there, if we take them and apply them in our lives, uh, will guide us. At that 36th chapter, <laughs> at 20, I'm sorry, the 35th chapter, then one of them, which was a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyers always trying to trip people up. Asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? 
And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And so this is that right relationship. We, we, we really have to work on our relationship with God to understand that the God within us helps us express ourselves. We are spiritual beings having a, a physical experience in life. And Jesus goes on to say, this is the first and great commandment. So the relationship with God is number one. God is love. I am one with God. Let us say that together. God is love. I am one with God. The second relationship, the second harmonic relationship is self with self. You know, each one builds on the other. It's hard to love yourself if you don't love God. I don't know how the atheists do it. Okay. You know, maybe they have something else, but I know for us who believe, who understand the flow, then if God is love and we are one with God, then shouldn't, then shouldn't we love ourselves? If we love ourselves, we wouldn't treat ourselves a certain kind of way. You ever do things and you say to yourself, how could I do that to myself? Has everybody ever felt that? You don't have to raise your hand, but <laughs> you know, you have to look around. <laughs> you know, the challenge is this, that the love, the feelings we have for ourselves are learned feelings, and they're often taught by people who may not love us or may not understand us, like parents. You know, I think Oprah says, you can't show what you don't know. One of the dangers of children having children is people are teaching kids that, and that what they don't know themselves. And so sometimes that idea of loving ourselves can be challenging. When we look at our childhood, I have a friend who does not go to church, does not believe in God, and I, you know, I, that's frightening. But when I got to know her better, I realized that in her young years she had experienced abuse. And as a child, she wondered, why doesn't somebody come and help me? Why doesn't somebody free me? Why doesn't somebody protect me? And no one did. So she has a big job to learn to love herself because she thought it was her fault. So this job of learning to love ourselves is powerful because when we love ourselves, we can then build on that. Let's affirm together, I love myself together. I love myself. Let's say it with a little wiggle. <laughs> Let's try it again. I love myself. Woo. Get in front of the mirror, boy. You can work with that. The third harmonic relationship is a relationship between us and other people. We call it self with others. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 22nd chapter and the 39th verse, and the second commandment is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you don't love yourself, <laughs> you can't love your neighbor. Isn't it interesting how it's put together? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, there's a sect that Hillel Jews, and they really believe that if you just know those two things, you don't need anything else. I think you can live a pretty good life if you that way. I acknowledge God and treat your neighbor as yourself and love yourself. This third harmonic relationship really is the, the foundation for all of our interpersonal relationships. And if we don't love ourselves, it's going to be challenging. I'll say the affirmation and then we can do it together. I do unto others as I would have others do unto me together. I do unto others as I would have others do unto me. The fourth harmonic relationship <laughs> is a relationship between us and time. We call it self and time. You notice how they build on each other. You love God, you love yourself, then you love others. Well, time is that one gift that God has given us. 
You know, very often we don't think about that, but the moment you're born, you start to experience time. Time is life, and life is time. And so how we spend that time, if we're spiritual beings having a human relationship, that relationship is in time, and how we use that time determines our level of happiness, our level of joy. You know, how should we treat time? Matthew 7, chapter 6, verse, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend and tear you, attack you. Isn't time our greatest gift? And so we must use our time, each and every one of us. We have the same number of minutes in an hour, same number of hours in a day. What we do with it, though, determines our life and the quality of our life. From moment to moment, we must ask this time question, and it is this. What is the best use of my time right now when I consider my goals, my vision, and my purpose? I'll say it, then you can repeat after me. What is the best use of my time right now? What is the best use of my time right now? When I consider my goals, my vision, and my purpose. When I consider my goals, my vision, and my purpose. You know how we use our time determines where we go and what we experience in life. The fifth harmonic relationship is a relationship between you and actions, between us and actions. Actions are the result of choices. When you were reading Paul, you talked about choice. And you know, I, I did a, a class last week and I said, time, choice, action. We are where we are because of the choices we've made. You know, sometimes we don't like to acknowledge it. But every experience that we have, every positive or negative experience is a result of our choices. And so choices manifest as actions. For every choice, there's an action. As they say, one of the laws of life is that everything has consequences. Every choice we make, there's an action associated with it. And so we have to, in Isaiah, it says, choose this day whom you will serve. We can choose to serve limitation and lack, or we can choose to serve abundance and accomplishment. You know, this idea of action, the moment you're on the path, you have to do something. Even if you don't do anything, you've made a choice. If you choose not to act, there are some people that procrastination just paralyzes them, but they can't do a thing. I'm sure we've all experienced it at one time. So even when you don't do anything, a choice is made and the actions result. In James, the first chapter, the 22nd verse, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So when we're on the path, if we understand what must be done and don't do it, we're deceiving ourselves and we will never establish that harmonic relationship that brings us joy. In Ecclesiastes it says, you know, we often wonder how, how diligently should we pursue the path. Ecclesiastes says, whatever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy and so as we're on this path, this journey towards a harmonic relationship, we really have to work at it. We can't shirk, we can't, I mean, literally, a part of our purpose is to do these things and do them with, with energy. I do what must be done efficiently and effectively. Let's say that together. I do what must be done efficiently and effectively. The sixth harmonic relationship, it's a relationship between us and material things. You know, in Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 32nd, 33rd verse, it says, But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, Jesus talks about the lilies in the field, that they don't sow, they don't have to do anything, but yet they are so beautiful, even Solomon would be inspired. And so if, if, if the Creator takes good care of the lilies of the field, wouldn't the Creator provide all that we need? Things are tools. 
We cannot serve two masters. No man can serve God and mammon. Mammon is another word for money. I don't have a problem with money. <laughs> Some people do. But it's because of wrong relationship. You know, that money is the root of all evil. That's not even in the Bible. <laughs> We paraphrase it kind of to fit our own uh, desires, but no money can serve, no one can serve two masters. Money is a terrible master, but an awesome servant. Amen. <laughs> so things become our servants and not our masters. I'll affirm it, we can say it together. Money is a terrible master, but an awesome servant. Together. Money is a terrible master, but an awesome servant. The seventh harmonic relationship is the one between us and our purpose. And you know, if you notice there's a circle, you know, we talk about the circle of life. You know, in Genesis, when it talks about man, it says that, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Man's purpose is to do God's work, to be fruitful and multiply, to have dominion, to create a present world. We have the power to create the world just as the Creator said, let there be light. We can say, let there be prosperity. We can say, let there be love. Let there be hope. Let there be anything that we want. We have the power to create the universe from within. So each of us has a purpose, and that purpose is revealed to us as we move along. You know, many of us, if we got our purpose and it was given to us right up front, we'd be afraid to run away from it. I doubt that Mother Teresa, as a young nun, chose to do what she did. To alleviate suffering and to treat sick people all over the world. But in her evolution, in her growth, your purpose is revealed to you. You know, we often go from failure to failure. And sometimes we don't like it, but every failure that we have is a dress rehearsal for success. It prepares us. We are like great diamonds, and we need pressure to make us shine. So when those things happen to us that challenge us, just look at it in the right way. Boy, this is an opportunity for growth. Sometimes you get too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we put it all together, when we look at this entire symphony, the harmonic relationship with the universe, the symphony that is our life. Then we can say this, as I live my life, I live my purpose. I'll say it and then you repeat after me. As I live my life, I live my purpose together. As I live my life, I live my purpose. <laughs> and so the purpose is to create this harmonic relationship with the universe so that we can achieve the happiness. So that we can say, I am one with God. So that we can say, I love myself. So that we can say, I do unto others as I would have others do unto me. So that we can say, I use my time in daily pursuit of my goals, my vision, and my purpose. So that we can say each day, I do what must be done efficiently and effectively. So that we can say, money is my servant to do my bidding so that we can finally say, I am one with my purpose. When we do that, then we have truly created that harmonic relationship from which good things can come, good health, joy. I'd like to seal this message with a, an affirmation. I'll say it and then we can repeat it together. And the affirmation is this, I am in rhythm and harmony. All that is good for me. Let's say it together. I am in rhythm and harmony with all that is good for me. Because I am God. Because I am love. Because I am convinced and totally committed to my purpose. And when we can do this, then we can say truly, I am. Let's say that together. I, I am, am happy. happy. And why? Because I am in rhythm and harmony with all that's good for me.
And so it is. It cannot be otherwise. And we rejoice because of it. Thank you. Thank you.